In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 13, the Bible tells us about a man named Saul. He was chosen by God to be the first king of Israel, but he faced many challenges and difficult situations. It seemed like everything was going wrong for Saul, and he began to lose hope. One day, Saul found himself in a desperate situation. The Philistines, their enemies, were gathering for battle at Michmash. Saul was supposed to wait for the prophet Samuel to offer sacrifices to God before going into battle, but Samuel was late. The people grew restless and began to leave Saul. Feeling anxious and afraid, Saul decided to take matters into his own hands. He offered the burnt sacrifice himself, going against God's command. Just as Saul finished the offering, Samuel arrived, disappointed and upset. He rebuked Saul for his impatience and lack of trust in God. Samuel explained that if Saul had only waited, God would have established his kingdom over Israel forever. But now, his reign would not continue, for God had found someone else, a man after his own heart, to be the next king. Saul learned a valuable lesson that day. He realized that impatience and a lack of trust in God can lead to disastrous consequences. This short story of Saul lets us know that there are always two sides to everything. It is our concept of the purpose of whatever happens that determines what we get out of the situation. You can turn every seemingly ugly situation around for your benefit. That is ultimately the plan and expectation of God for us, His children. The Bible makes this clear in Romans chapter 8, from verses 28 and 29. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. So as believers, no situation that comes our way is meant to consume us, not at all. The Scripture says that God will not allow what we won't benefit from to come to us. In 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 13, it says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. So the only thing we should learn to do is learn how to turn or convert every situation for our eventual good especially what our attitude should be, towards every seemingly disadvantageous situation. And there are basically three attitudes or qualities we must possess, apply, and exhibit towards every seemingly ugly situation if we are to come out of it stronger, better, victorious, and with flying colors. The first is that we must imbibe and exhibit calmness and composure toward the situation. No matter how ugly, irredeemable and a basket case the situation presents itself, just be calm, don't be unduly moved or agitated. Be calm and prayerfully wait upon God without entertaining fear or despair. And that's the deposition that God expects of you for Him to turn things around in your favor. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, He says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run, and not be weary, and they shall walk, and not faint. That talks about turning things around for his people, but the criterion is that you have got to wait upon him. And in waiting upon God, you have got to do that with faith, trust and calmness. Otherwise, you may be pushed into the mistake of Saul, who lost his patience to wait for Samuel as commanded because the people were leaving him. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 8 to 14. Then he waited seven days, according to the time set by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. So Saul said, 
bring a burnt offering and peace offerings here to me. And he offered the burnt offering. Now it happened, as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering, that Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might greet him. And Samuel said, What have you done? Saul said, When I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that you did not come within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered together at Michmash. Then I said, The Philistines will now come down on me at Gilgal, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. Therefore I felt compelled, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people, because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. And in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, the Bible says, So don't worry, because I am with you, don't be afraid, because I am your God. I will make you strong and will help you, I will support you with my right hand that saves you. If you believe and practice this scripture in every situation and circumstance, God will definitely turn everything around for the better eventually. The second is that we must be patient with God and the situation and also keep being consistent in our faith, our faithfulness, and our relationship with God. You have got to learn and practice being patient with situations, people and things if you expect them to turn around eventually for your good. Patience is a virtue that everyone who will ever climb to the top must imbibe and practice. For in so doing, God promises us victory and a joyful end. In Psalm 37, from verse 6 down to verse 9, and even to verse 40, the Bible gives us what will be our eventuality if we patiently and consistently wait upon God. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him, do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath, do not fret. It only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. The third is that we must maintain an attitude of joy and thankfulness to God, not minding what the situation suggests. No matter how the situation presents itself, the Bible recommends that we remain joyful and thankful to God, for it is by so doing that we will be able to tap into the abundance of grace and blessings that God has in stock for His faithful followers. Isaiah chapter 12, verses 3 and 4 says, Therefore with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And in that day you will say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his deeds among the peoples, make mention that his name is exalted. Let us pray. Thank you dear Father Lord, because all undesirable situations in our lives have been turned around for our good through the wisdom and knowledge that we have gained from your word. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We are delighted to have you join us today. We would love to hear your experiences of how faith has made a positive impact in your life or in the lives of those around you. Feel free to share your stories in the comments section below, as they can truly uplift and inspire fellow believers. Additionally, if you find this video meaningful, we kindly ask you to consider sharing it with someone special. Your support is deeply appreciated. God bless you.